if you are not dealing with alcoholics or drug addicts, you might be dealing with something known as a hungry ghost. A hungry ghost is a nasty spirit. A nasty spirit that was a glutton during their human life. That means someone who uh, just was just like this guy, loved to eat and loved to drink. And basically ignored everything else around them so that they could get drunk and fat. Then they died and they became a ghost. And the ghost is still looking to drink and looking to eat. Known as a hungry ghost, what happens? They attach to humans. And uh, when they become attached to humans, the human they're attached to will feel a need to eat and drink. So does it mean all alcoholics have got some of uh, these ghosts attached to them? Yes. If you are hanging out in bars and drinking booze, you are um, infested with hungry ghosts that are hungry for booze. What else are they hungry for? Yes, they're hungry for food. They want to be fed, and uh, whatever their specific tastes are, you're going to notice that they want a certain thing. How else do these entities attach to you? Mostly just because you're there and you have a body. How do they get in? Uh, it's not really known. They just do. How do you get rid of them? You have to stop drinking booze. And if they want you to go to the all-you-can-eat cafe and pick out, uh, you're going to have to make sure you watch how many plates of food you put into your mouth. Some of these uh, hungry ghosts are never satisfied, and even when you're on your fourth plate of all-you-can-eat Chinese, uh, they're going to come back in a couple hours and say, it's Chinese food, you're hungry again, and send you down to the pizza parlor. And then you wonder why you put on six pounds in a week, it's because you've got a friendly ghost looking for a friendly meal from you. The best protection against these entities is to be aware they're real. They exist. And the ones that like to drink alcohol hang out in bars. The ones that like to eat food, maybe they like to go to places where people are overeating a lot. Some of these places that give you enough food for an army. So, uh, yeah, if you don't want to pick up one of these nasty things, uh, someone else keeps mentioning cigarettes. Yes, there are hungry ghosts that really like to smoke. And so if you all of a sudden decide, hmm, I had a strange feeling, a hankering for a cigarette, it's most likely a hungry ghost that wants you to smoke. Is there anything that you could do that is related to hungry ghosts? Mostly become very aware of these hidden things, these things that you don't see, but they're real. They might be astral entities. They might be etheric entities. They're just words. They just mean you can't see them with your eyes, but you might, you're definitely going to feel their hunger for whatever they're hungry for. And you might smell them in certain ways. Sometimes you might have odd smells. Um, I, it's possible they might even start talking to you in a voice in your head. Uh, and that's why I always say, is the voice in your head your own? Oh, I've had this voice in here for 17 years or... Since as long as I can remember, it doesn't mean it's your voice. It's quite likely that if you do have voices in your head, that it is an attached entity. And uh, you could try getting it removed by a shaman. Um, good luck. No one knows if they'll be able to get rid of them. Uh, if you can't get rid of it, then um, I don't know if you want to make friends with it, but you're going to have to tell it. Uh, I know you like to eat three plates of food, but I'm a little person and I eat three quarters of a plate. If that's not good enough, uh, you're going to have to get lost. And if they want you to drink booze, 
it's going to be you versus them because uh, everyone knows if you get someone like an alcoholic, uh, they can't stop drinking. And if one of these dead alcoholics has got into you and is nesting in your body and wants to start drinking, guess who's going to turn into an alcoholic? Is this a cure for alcoholism, getting rid of these hungry ghosts? <coughs> Could be. Could be. How are you going to find a good shaman? It's not necessary to find a good shaman. It's necessary for you to become a good shaman. And that is you have to start watching yourself. Watching to see what's going on. what's going on with me today why am i bored that's the number one reason why people overeat and over over drink over smoke do too much of any one activity it's because they're bored or on a downward spiral you're an alcoholic the bar is not open well i'm gonna get all antsy I'm going to get all antsy and I'm going to go along the main street where all the bars are and I'm going to rattle the front door of each one just to make sure it's locked because I don't want anyone getting in there and stealing the booze before I get in there. I need all the booze in the back for me. So I'm going to check on all the bars first thing this morning and then once I've got them, I'm going to file a report. So I, when I go in and see the owner... Oh, I was barred, so I'm going to have to talk, tell the owner why I, I deserve to come back in the bar. Well, well, you only broke a table last night, and you you know, you know, got an altercation with the bouncer. Uh, I know, but I still need to get the booze. See, this is the way that an alcoholic thinks. An alcoholic thinks, uh, well, you know, when I'm sober, I'm going to be helping you. My job is I'm going to help you. You don't need help. I, I'm going to help you anyway. I'm going to find new ways to help you. It's going to be my new business, helping the bar. And first thing, it's going to be the service. We're going to check on your doors first thing in the morning. And then I'm going to get a squeegee. I'm going down to the corner, uh, the gas station on the corner. And I'm going to grab a squeegee. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to, just for free, just for free, I'm going to clean your windows. And you'll see me and you're going to go, there's that guy who was alcoholic. And he was uh, causing a terrible problem of fighting with people last night now he's out cleaning my windows is he making good no he's not he's trying to get himself back into your bar later on today if you see one of these alcoholics trying to do things for you and you're a bar owner you don't need me to tell you they're bad news and they want to get back into your bar they're working at it 12 different ways because they know they need a drink why don't they just go to the liquor store and stay drunk in their room? Because they get bored. Doesn't matter how much you got to drink, it's more fun to get drunk with other people. And if they don't like you, it doesn't matter as long as you're not alone. Because then the paranoia creeps up. Am I being too hard on myself? Am I needing another, where is my bottle of finest whiskey? You can't go halfway and you can't say I'm on a waiting list. You have to basically go cold turkey. Cold turkey. And if you're into cigarettes, you're going to have to go cold turkey. If you're into food, you can't go cold turkey. Not even cold turkey sandwiches. You're going to have to look at your plate and say, I'm not eating more than three quarters of an adult meal. Because if you eat a full adult meal, then you're going to want to add dessert. So three quarters of a dinner plate, then you can have a small dessert that will satisfy your cravings for dessert. And then you'll have eaten one plate of food, which is normal for an ad adult, not four plates of food, which is normal for a pig. 
I don't know why I have to keep re re responding and reminding people. I'm not born yesterday. I know what it's like for people who are addicted to substances. They're all the same. It's not only have I witnessed it in my person, I've seen it all on TV a million times. Is it any different on TV than real life? No, they've got it perfectly right. Alcoholics are always the same. Drug addicts are always the same. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pay you back. I know uh, I told you I, you know, I needed some money for rent and you helped me out and I blew it all on cocaine. But, you know, uh, I'm going to pay you back. Uh, you know, I just wanted to come shake your hand, you know, and as you can see, I'm sober right now. Uh, I don't have the money for, well, I do have money right now, but that's for my drinking. I, you know, I got to have a budget for tonight's drinking. Uh, I got $250. Oh, I, owe, I don't owe you that much. Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, it's for drinking and, and drugging tonight. $250. Yep. Yeah. I know. I know it's been two years that uh, I've been promising to pay you back for that rent money. Uh, I know. I know. But, uh, you know, I got a drink tonight. And, you know, I promised Mickey. I promised Mickey that we were going to go uh, a little toot. You know, you wouldn't want me to disappoint Mickey. This is what alcoholic and drug addicts do. They'll smile in your face and glad handle you. Uh, no. No. What other kind of people are like this? What other kind of people smile at your face, tell you you're going to get a really good deal with? Oh, salespeople. Salespeople are addicted to making sales. And they're addicted to taking people's money and addicted to basically telling you anything to get you to walk off with whatever it is. Salespeople, a really good salesperson, oh yeah, they'll talk to you for an hour if they think you're going to drop five grand on something. Oh, they'll talk and they'll be your best friend and you can tell them your life story. Old people love salespeople. So old people are bored and they'll just go walking through the mall, you know, and it's a fresh salesperson. Oh, this guy doesn't know me. Oh, I'm going to tell him about, you know, when I was a young person and, you know, when I was in the, this or that. Yeah, I'll talk to them and I'll, you know, pull up my wallet. And say, I got all this money. I'm looking at these big screen TVs. You want to sell me one of these things? Uh, but then, you know, oh, I, I can't buy it right now. I got to go and check with my wife. Um, then the salesperson knows who you are. Some salespeople will keep at you, you know. They really want to make sure you're not going to buy. But, you know, by the sixth time you come into the store... Uh, they know what you are. You're a time waster. Move along, old man. Move along. Anyways, monkey-minded human.